And with me now is in my showcases, Mr. Tom Wilson. And I have a question for you that I've wanted to ask you for four years. How is it to play somebody so despicable as Biff in Back to the Future? I mean, not even his mother loves him. He lives with his grandmother. He lives with his grandmother. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun. You know, it's been a dream of mine to be despised by the American public uh, ever since I was a young man growing up in Pennsylvania, and those dreams have all come true. Everyone hates me and my character, and <laughs> it's a huge success. So he makes such an impact. You know, the first movie was such a big success, and mm -hmm. I'm sure part two also will be. What kind of uh, reaction do you get from people that you meet? What is your fan mail like? Uh, my family likes the fact that I'm in, in such, you know, huge movies, but my mom is, you know, always saying, well, can't they make you look better? They should make you handsome in the movies. I hate when you look like that. You look ugly in that. But, uh, but they're very happy with it. You know, I mean, it's a lot of fun to do. And, the ca and then, you know, the character is a great one. I mean, oh, yes. Gosh, especially in Back to the Future 2. It, you make you know, four of him here. Actually, yeah. Or four. five? Well, four embodiments of Biff himself. Right. As well as Biff's grandson, Griff. And uh, we also hint at Biff's great-great-grandfather. In part three. That's right. Yeah. Now, which of those four that, that you do in this movie was the hardest one to get into for you? The hardest one was probably the oldest. You know, was, was Biff as an old man, nearly 80 years old, because it took about six hours of makeup every day to get into that, uh, to get into that character, uh, as well as trying to keep it uh, a subtle change in aging rather than doing just the textbook caricature of an old man and what everyone's impression in their mind is of, of an elderly person as opposed to trying to be an actual realistic believable older person. So I, that was probably the most difficult but each of them had their challenges. Which did you have the most fun with? The most fun I think was Griff, Biff's grandson who was just absolutely a wild man. <laughs> Who was, you know, something went wrong with his bionic implants. He's got electrical flashes going on in his brain. So he's got all twitchy and, and, and wild. So I had fun with that because it's a character just way out in left field. At one point, the two of you are together in one frame. Uh, the, old the Biff old, and you. Yes. yes, that's right. Yes. How that's is that right. done? That was done with the uh, Industrial Light and Magic's VistaGlide camera, done with computers, uh, where I would get to work very early in the morning, say 3, 3 o'clock in the morning, would go through the six hours of makeup for the old man, would do half of the scene, and the camera r would memorize its precise movements. I would have the makeup removed in a process that took about an hour to an hour and a half, would come back made up as young Biff or Griff, depending on which other character I was playing against, would go back to the set and had it get a radio earpiece in my ear so that I could hear what I had done as the older character and would try to fit in my lines into the spaces that I had left myself, along with Bob Zemeckis, the director, uh, calling into my ear through the radio with, from a microphone saying, move to the left, walk over to the chair, put the book down, you know, things like that. So it was, uh, it was really challenging. I bet it was. And then, of course, there's nobody for you to act with. In Nobody, real life. no, actually, right. from hearing. We had, a, we had a photo double, a guy that was my size, so I could see an eye line or an accurate representation of where my eyes should go. But, uh, but I was just hearing the lines in my head and would, would try to act like that. Boy. Your part is much bigger in number two than it was in the first one. Mm -hmm. Was that something you looked forward to when you started the movie, or was that an, an added responsibility, say? Well, it's both, but of course it's wonderful, you know. I mean, my gosh, to be given a role like this one with uh, doing, you know, six different embodiments of a character was, was fabulous. And it's a little scary. It's a little scary mm -hmm. to be, you know, biting off such a huge piece of a movie. But, uh, you know, I didn't have much choice but to just uh, jump in the deep water and start swimming like crazy. You started out as a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. didn't you? How did that help you in approaching all these characters? It helped me in just the delivery of comedy. You know, as a comedian, you just get used to standing up there on your feet, having several hundred people watching you, expecting something to come out, and you have to put on a show. The pressure is there, uh, you know, and the pressure is great in, in comedy. So, uh, so it helped me deal with the pressure of doing these characters, and it helped just in the delivery of comedy. You know, you just know how to deliver a punchline. It helped a lot. Tom, we are unfortunately out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice meeting you. The future.
Welcome to Texaco. You can trust your car to the system with the star. Check the oil. Check the classic gear. Shark still looks fake. What the hell was that? Taxi cab. What do you mean a taxi cab? I thought we were flying. Precisely. All right, Doc, what's going on, huh? Where are we? When are we? We're descending toward Hill Valley, California at 4.29 p.m. On Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. 2015? You mean we're in the future? The future, Marty? What do you mean? How can we be in the future? Uh, Jennifer, um... I don't know how to tell you this, but... You're in a time machine. Here's our exit! Check this out, Doc. Look what happened oh. to your son. Oh. He's a complete wimp. Don't talk to anyone. You've been looking. Bob. Hey, look. No. Don't touch anything. I need to borrow your hoverboard. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh. And try not to look at anything. I didn't invent the time machine to win at gambling. I can't lose. I invented the time machine to travel through time. Hey, Doc, I'm all for that. What's wrong with making a few bucks on the side? The time continuum has been disrupted, creating an alternate 1985. It's like we're in hell or something. No, it's Hill Valley, although I can't imagine hell being much worse. Eat lead slackers! Biff? Hello? Hey. Hello, anybody home? Why well, they can't be you? You're so big. Let's try. More like a couple of teenagers, you know? Mom, is that you?